Have you ever felt like your opponents kept playing returns into your backhand corner and you just couldn't do anything about it? Well, we felt this before, but after implementing three simple things, this almost never happens anymore. So in this video, we're going to share these three things so you can also stop this situation from happening to you. Let's get straight into it. Tip one is for your partner to vary their serve, and more importantly, serve to a place where it's almost impossible for your opponents to hit this hard return. So if your partner is serving to a right-hander from the right side of the court, serving to their backhand here means their natural swing is to hit the shuttle straight, which is directly into your backhand. But if your partner serves across their body to their forehand, their natural swing is to hit the shuttle cross-court, which then goes to your forehand. Serving to this specific place is really hard for them to play a good shot to your backhand. And a quick bonus tip is that if you also lose a lot of points on your backhand side in rallies, you can use this same principle. Start hitting to places where it's harder for your opponents to hit to your backhand, aka down your forehand side. And although we're focusing on doubles in this video, this tip also applies to singles. Now, returning back to the serve placement, and there's two important things to note. One is that you need to look at how your opponent is setting up to receive the serve, as this could change a lot of what we've just said. So, we've just shown the returner setting up like this, but if they set up more similar to this, then serving to the tee means their shot is actually more likely to go cross-court to your forehand. And two, it's important to note you can actually tempt your opponent to play down your backhand side, either by serving low out wide to the tramline, as the most likely reply would be a straight push up the line, or by serving to the tee like we discussed earlier. But if you're gonna do this serve to the tee, you probably need to change one thing, which brings us on to our second tip. The second thing we implemented is so simple, but it almost completely eliminated this scenario. And this is to think about where you're standing when your partner is serving. For most people, it's in the center of the court with their feet an equal distance each side of the middle line. Now, this isn't wrong, but our second tip to make sure you can get this hard return is to move your starting position slightly over to your backhand side. But this is where communication is important because we'd recommend telling your partner that this is what you're going to do and then they cover the forehand side after their serve. We're not saying for your partner to come all of the way out here because this would leave a huge gap for your opponents to play a simple net shot. If they did lift over your partner's head, you should still be able to get this as it's on your forehand side which, if you're watching this video, is likely to be better than your backhand. So if this scenario is happening to you, by you and your partner slightly moving position and you're now only looking for the backhand side, then it would look like this. You might also be wondering, how far back should you stand? Well, we'll answer this in tip three, playing the right shot. So if your opponent is often hitting a really flat return, then you can stand further forwards to be able to intercept and play an early backhand. A soft shot to the middle from here is often a good shot because the returner can't easily reach this as they have to change direction of movement and it also creates indecision. Another good option is to hit it over them if they're staying in and looking for this soft shot. Now there's one big mistake we often see people making which prevents them from doing this and this is not having their racket ready. Yeah, we often see a lot of you waiting with your racket down here and we used to too but this means that your racket has a further distance to travel to the shuttle. This usually means you can't intercept it, and instead you have to turn and play a late backhand, which is what we're trying to avoid. So having a better starting position will hopefully help you with this and get you out of the habit of automatically turning to play a backhand. Now, if your opponent's return is higher, you might have time to play around the headshot, which will be way more effective than a backhand from this position. If they play a really high lift, then you'll have time to play a scissor kick, but this probably isn't the situation you're struggling with and probably not the reason you've clicked on this video. Instead, what we're talking about is a quick flat lift into the corner. If your opponents are playing this return more frequently, then we'd advise moving your starting position back. And because you won't have loads of time, what we suggest doing is a round the head jump out smash. We've done an entire video breaking down this jump out smash, so we'll link that in the description below if you want to check it out after this. These tips, especially the last one, have helped us never play a really late backhand on the third shot anymore. But what if they don't work for you? Well, you might need to improve two things. Firstly, you need to improve your backhand strength, meaning you can generate enough power to ease some of the pressure. 
For that, we'd recommend watching this video here where we share some tips for you to maximize your backhand power. And second, you need to improve your explosive strength and speed to be able to move to the shuttle as efficiently and explosively as possible. For this, we'd recommend checking out our badminton specific weights programs, which we'll link in the description below. That was a bit of a shorter video, but it's a really common issue that a lot of you guys have asked about. So we hope you found it useful. And if there's any other specific questions like this that you want us to make shorter videos on in the future, then do let us know in the comments below. And lastly, if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a like, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll hopefully see you on another video very soon. Bye. Bye.